gang violence and other kind of violence. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's a Black Gen Z mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. Street vendors and neighbors are demanding more police protection after a series of robberies on the northwest side. Fox 32's Nate Rogers talked with them today and has more on their frustration. Nate? This area is normally filled with street vendors today, not so much. Now, Chicago police tell us the suspects in this latest string of robberies are brazen and they appear to be connected to at least six different cases. Tamale lady got robbed out here. There was four suspects and there's no clues. Community activists and residents outraged after two women, a 19-year-old and 33-year-old, both selling tamales, robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> Yeah. So these ninjas in Chicago are not playing. They're robbing street vendors for tamales at gunpoint. I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. And this is what black people in Chicago voted for. They demanded soft on crime. They demanded defunding the police. They demanded the removal of the shot spotter program. They voted for it. And now they are regretting their decisions because these super gremlins are on demon time. The crime pattern occurred Friday. In total, six people robbed at five locations within a 45 minute time span. Wallets, credit cards, cash, and purses all stolen. We're here to complain about uh, no police patrols. We need more police out here. It happened at 3300 West Armitage, 3300 North Milwaukee, two instances at 3300 West Fullerton, also 4800 West Dakin and 2600 North Parkside. Police also saying guns displayed had extended magazines. Mm. I have kids. I want to see my kids walk out their door and I want to see them walk into the park and play ball and have a good time. Oh, well, too bad. This is what you voted for. And I do not feel sorry for the black community at this point. I, I, I mean, it, it's, it's almost impossible for me to, when I have the knowledge of what y'all were doing just six months ago, you were begging to defund the police, begging to remove police patrols, saying that police patrolling the streets was racist and that they're race soldiers. So you guys can pick up the pieces. You guys can pick up the piece to the puzzle and put it back together yourself. But, um, you know, from, from my point of view, the community is cooked. Without being worried. Detectives are looking for up to five <laughs> men responsible. Police say they're described as African-American between 15 and 25 years old, known to wear ski masks and black hoodies. We opened the store and um, it was just police flying down in different directions on Milwaukee, like 10 cop cars mm. just going crazy all day, though. Nicole Bay is from the area and works at a local Verizon store. She says they're definitely beefing up security measures. So we do keep the door locked, um, pay attention, um, just watch your surroundings. And community activist Pat Gibbons is offering a $5,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest and conviction of the suspects in this string of attacks. That is the latest here in the city's Avondale neighborhood. I'm Nate Rogers, Fox 32 Chicago. Yeah, the community keeps saying, why aren't the police coming out? Shot spotter has given us that. We are glad that the mayor is moving us in a different direction. Mixed reactions to Mayor Brandon Johnson's decision not to renew the contract on the controversial shot spotter program. WGN's Jenna Barnes is joining us live tonight with more on this still developing story. Jenna. Yeah, Ray and Dina, Mayor Brandon Johnson campaigned on ending shot spotter. Some activists say it can lead to police violence, but there is pushback against the mayor's decision tonight. Some say he is taking away a life saving tool from police. We need this shot spotter. Tina Hammond lives in Inglewood and has the shot spotter gunfire detection system on her block. I'm not going to say it makes me feel 100% safe, 
But just knowing that there are other things besides me or my neighbor calling 911, I just think that's very important. She joined. So you have black women who are supporting the Shot Spotter program, yet for some reason, Mayor Brandon Johnson is getting rid of it. And obviously, he ran on this. It wasn't like he lied about what he planned on doing. It wasn't like he deceived the people of Chicago. It, 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 he completely told y'all what he was going to do. He played in y'all's faces. You went along with him and played there with him and cheered him on. And every speech that he gave, y'all was hooping and hollering, saying, yes, amen. So you better say that as if y'all were in some black church. And then when he gets in the office, he does exactly what he says he was going to do. And now you're 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 upset. <laughs> it's crazy joined a news conference alongside some alders outside a senior living community, denouncing Mayor Brandon Johnson's decision to end Chicago's contract with the company behind ShotSpotter. Chicago has spent nearly $50 million on the technology since 2018. At this senior building, I would constantly get calls about shootings. When they implemented ShotSpotter, those calls went down. Mayor Johnson is fulfilling a campaign promise by ending the city's use of the controversial system. A 2021 MacArthur Justice Center report found nearly 9 in 10 police deployments did not lead to evidence of gun-related crime. Critics say ShotSpotter leads to over-policing of marginalized communities. <laughs> so, here's what you have to understand. With the ShotSpotter technology, the police would not be arriving in your area if gunshots didn't happen or occur in said area so it's not over policing it's really over shooting and i i just don't understand how black people continue to accept and perpetuate this falsehood that it, we're being over police when we are committing the majority of the crimes this is indeed a win for the city. We want to plan uh, neighborhood by neighborhood uh, with all our institutions, including the Chicago Police Department, on best practices to make sure that our communities are safer and are stronger together. The city saying in a statement moving forward, the city of Chicago will deploy its resources on the most effective strategies and tactics proven to accelerate the current downward trend in violent crime. Police Superintendent Larry Snelling has said previously, ShotSpotter saves lives, allowing officers to get to scenes before anyone calls 911. We have documented, just through giving officers awards for it, life-saving awards, you know, over 150 incidents where officers have applied tourniquets and life-saving techniques because they were able to get to that scene sooner. Mm. ShotSpotter's proponents calling on the mayor to reconsider his decision before police stop using the system September 22nd, about a month after the Democratic National Convention. You want to wait until all the dignitaries come from around the country and then cancel ShotSpotter the month after they leave? Yep. What about the people that are here every single day? That he doesn't care and y'all don't either because you voted for him. I just cannot feel an ounce of remorse for these people. I can't. After all of the content that I've covered from coming from Chicago, continually hearing people scream that they don't need police and we can police our own. Well, let's put this little thought project to the test. That should be your focus. We did check with CPD tonight to see if Superintendent Snelling has a comment on this decision. CPD directed us back to the mayor's office. We're live at CPD headquarters tonight. Jenna Barnes, WGN News. What's good, Shadow Realm? It's your boy, Jenquavius Jackson, and you already know I'm demonetizing shadow ban in this bitch. So if you want to contribute, go to the Cash App, the PayPal, the GoFundMe, or join the Patreon. Also, don't forget to visit the merch store for all your favorite BGZM News 17 gear, including our exclusive Trump is a Blood t-shirt. Go fast before they sell out. They are already flying off the shelves, no cap. And remember, these super gremlins are on demon time. Nearly three years after an I-Team data investigation raised serious doubts and questions about ShotSpotter's effectiveness and value, the multi-million...
Their technology on a pole tonight is being shot down by the Chicago mayor's office, but it's not dying immediately. Even though the gunshot detection contract expires this week, shot spotter will continue through the summer. When gunshots are detected, the equipment under contract with City Hall is to immediately send information to Chicago police and patrol officers can be deployed to that area. In 2021, the I-Team obtained and analyzed 37,763 shot spotter alerts mm. that had been recorded in Chicago. That Dang. data investigation revealed that in more than 32,000 of those incidents, when the system apparently detected gunfire, police responded but didn't report a crime. Yeah, because... <laughs> the the super gremlins leave beforehand but here's here's the logic those other instances right those other what is it uh 5000 instances where a crime was reported that's what matters because you were able to help 5000 people potentially so <laughs> It's absolutely ridiculous that they're using this logic and people are accepting it. Well, out of the majority of the incidences where police responded, there was no crime. Yeah, because the super gremlins just dip off. That's 86% of the time there were shots detected, but no charges. Our reporting was followed a few months later by this inspector general's report on the $33 million technology that found less than one in 10 shot spotter alerts actually found evidence of a gun crime. But if something doesn't work, why wouldn't you just get rid of it when the contract expires in two days? Tonight, the I-Team circles back with Chicago's Inspector General following Mayor Johnson's decision to scrap the shot spotter contract, allowing coverage only through the summer, including the Democratic National Convention. I don't know whether the public has been served. That That's sort of where we landed in our analysis when we looked at shot spotter data back in 2021, was that the Chicago Police Department's data did not itself demonstrate a substantial operational benefit. Shot spotter supporters, including police and fire committee chair Alderman Chris Taliafaro, say the technology helps solve crimes. I think it has been an improvement from the traditional call to 911, mm. uh, which goes through a, a process before it's even dispatched out. And once that dispatch occurs, um, you know, you've had, you've lost valuable time in helping to save lives. We need to make sure that we are equipping members of the police department as best as we can to succeed in what is dangerous and challenging work and that we're doing everything we can to keep everybody safe in uniform and out. Shot spotter corporate officials tonight have not commented on losing their city contract, but this month on the company website did post a 17 page defense of the technology in Chicago, citing six years of positive protection, they say, alerting police to gunfire, almost 3,000 guns taken off the streets, mm. and helping to save, they say, at least 125 lives. We'll see what actually happens with this contract over the next four or five months. Chicago is pulling the plug on ShotSpotter. It's the controversial technology that is supposed to alert police to gunfire. Nay Rogers reports that decision may be almost as controversial as the program itself. Even on the campaign trail, Mayor Brendan Johnson said that he would remove ShotSpotter from the city's budget. Critics say that the service is unreliable and leads to unconstitutional policing. Others, including police officers, say that it's a reliable resource, especially in underserved communities where the code of silence still maintains. 35 cities have already said this technology is unreliable. In September, right after the DNC in Chicago, shot spotter will end. Mm. The technology alerts police. And, and notice how they're ending it right after the DNC so they can protect their coveted, sacred leftist elite. Oh, my God. You can't make this stuff up. It, it It's absolutely hilarious. It's almost... You know, it it, it, it just, it, it leaves you lost for words, truly. Real time to locations where gunshots were fired. I feel it's very disrespectful of the mayor to make a decision like this without even 
the, getting the input of the community. In place since 2018, ShotSpotter costs Chicagoans about $8 million annually. City Council members speaking in Inglewood today outraged by the mayor's decision not to renew the contract, saying with the department down more than 2,000 officers, many residents are not calling police. We're here to tell the mayor that he's wrong, that he needs to change his decision, and listen to Oh, well, too bad because y'all voted him in and y'all bet y'all begged him for this and now he's giving all of your aid to illegal aliens and pretty much saying to the hell with uh my constituency because they're going to vote for me either way. And I guarantee if Mayor uh Brandon Johnson ran for mayor again, he would get voted in again. 100%. No doubt in my mind. To the community. Black and brown communities hear gunshots all the time. There are some communities that are immune to it. So therefore, sometimes people just don't call the police. Yep. Shot spotters say And it's it's not because it, it just happens so much. It's because the no snitching culture has bred a a whole generation of people who think it's wrong to do the right thing lives. Why? Because the police will still respond to that call. On the other side, several cities have rejected ShotSpotter because of inaccuracies and red flags. What the Inspector General's report found is that the police enter every single situation with a ShotSpotter report, guns blazing, because they think that there's shots being fired in that moment. And in the case of Adam Toledo, what occurred is it led to that little boy, that 13-year-old boy, being shot and killed. Okay, well, let me, let me stop you there. Adam Toledo... He was a burrito gremlin. He was shooting, he was shooting up the streets at in the wee hours of the night. And then when he fled from police, he abruptly turned around and he got his ass shot. Do I feel bad for Adam Toledo? No. As a matter of fact, I would even go as far as to say is he probably deserved everything that happened to him. We do not need to defend people like this in the community because these guys are moving and operating on evil completely he was shooting into buildings indiscriminately and he got his just dessert in a statement the mayor's office saying in part quote law enforcement and community safety stakeholders will assess tools and programs that effectively increase both safety and trust and issue recommendations to that effect former top cop gary mccarthy also not a fan of the decision i think it's a bad decision as far as catching bad guys and preventing somebody else from getting shot now we must add in the case of adam toledo a gun was found in his possession also the police board ordered an officer involved to be disciplined and now the last day for shot spotter is september 22nd until then older men in inglewood today telling us that they will work to win majority city council support to overturn the mayor's plans and as the ladies here outside chicago police headquarters i'm nate rogers fox 32 chicago Gang violence and other kind of violence.